Excuse us. Pardon me, ma'am. Sorry, sorry. Move it, asshole. Oh, thank God. We got good seats. Damn right we did. What's up? We got the drink. We got the popcorn. And the candy. I think we're ready, man. Hey, guys. Sorry I'm late. The bathroom here is nuts. Oh, my God. You made it. Yay. It's about time, Nathan. Damn. Shh. The movie's starting. Hey, that Vulcan. <laughs> Holy nine. And I'm a shit socialist. <laughs> and this is the Silver Linings Playlist, a podcast that tries to find the silver lining in the Vulcan. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you like that? I thought about committing to the bit fully and only saying those three words for the <laughs> next hour. But yeah, dude, we're a bit of a throwback to like the first, what, two seasons? Uh, no, three we're, seasons? We're going old school with it. Just the two of us hanging out. You and I have not been left alone <laughs> in years. It's been a while. It's been a bit of so yeah nathan could be here he, uh last i heard from him he was on the yacht uh that blew up <laughs> Wait, is, so is this the kind of shit you say when i'm not here yeah 100 <laughs> percent. it should be noted i've never listened to an i mean i barely listen to any episodes but i've never <laughs> listened to an episode that i wasn't here for <laughs> oh i couldn't tell if nathan was a pirate or not so maybe it's best left unsaid you know mm-hmm. what i mean end in vulcan <laughs> uh, <laughs> I have something I want to I know the write. joke you want to yeah. make. I know. I can already tell what the joke's going to be. Uh, <laughs> welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us for yet another installment of the Silver Linings Playlist. That's Mally. I'm Dustin. And if you're new to the show, we like to talk about movies such as the movie we're talking about this week, Triangle of Sadness, that don't have happily ever after endings. And uh, after our discussion about it, we like to come up with a silver lining for the characters at the end of the movie, hence the name of the show. Now, this week, Mally, this is the first episode of 2024. You know what? New year, new me. <laughs> this is the first time I've picked a good movie in a while. <laughs> you did. I was after The Flash. I was like, I don't know. Maybe we need to take away his right to pick. <laughs> Much like the rich do in this movie, just take away things from the working class. Jesus. No, this is a great pick. I'm glad you picked it. I've only seen this movie once, and that was right before the Oscars last year. So I'm glad I had a chance to revisit it. Is there any particular reason why you picked this movie for right now? I thought it would be fun to kick off the new year. And funny story about this movie. Mm. For some reason, I had a completely different vibe in mind when my because my wife would my constantly wife. be like, oh, my God, like, let's watch that. Let's watch that. Mm-hmm. And I said no for months. I was like, <laughs> ah, I don't know. Just like not the vibe I'm looking for, you know, mm-hmm. like not into it because I mean, I don't know what I never had never seen a trailer, mm-hmm. never seen a poster. All I knew was the title and that the lead actress passed away. Yeah. Yeah. And for some reason in my mind, I was like, I thought it was going to be like a dark, trippy, a 24 type movie. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's not. It's 100 percent not. <laughs> um, it is a dark comedy. Mm-hmm. I had no I, I don't know why. I don't know why my mind thought it was that kind of movie. Mm-hmm. All I had to do was, you know, Google it. Yeah. <laughs> and I did not. No, I, I feel you. I feel you. I, I get that way about tons of movies all the time. Where I'm like, I, everyone keeps telling me to watch it, but I'm like, just the premise alone or the title, I, it kind of turns me off to it. But um, no, I fully hear you. The, the only reason I was fully in on whatever this movie was going to be is because I had seen uh, Ruben Ostlin, the director's previous movie, The Square, that won the Palme d'Or. Yep. And I enjoyed that. So I was like, okay, whatever this dude does next, I'm fucking in on. And I think I'm putting it together that Neon Pictures, who uh, distributed this movie, just likes really doing dark comedies. <laughs> like, because Parasite was one of their darlings that came out as well. And then there's this movie that also won a bunch of awards. I think that's their lane. Is like, here's some really thought provoking, dark, satirical comedy. <laughs> yeah, they, I have. So there's a movie coming out, I think, this year that I worked on that Neon did. Mm-hmm. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> okay. All right. I don't want to name drop it because I don't know if I'm allowed to say. Oh, yeah, of course, of course. Very, very curious. They're quickly becoming like my one of my favorite distribution companies alongside like A24. So Dude, they've subtly had some bangers mm-hmm. in the past like decade because mm-hmm. like, Neon's been around for a while. Yeah, yeah. They're on the come up for sure. So, yeah, Triangle of Sadness. Um, if there's no other preamble here, we can get into uh, all the fun facts about it. What do you say? Do you know what? End in Vulcan. End in Vulcan. Let's go. Oh my god, I was screaming that for <laughs> weeks around the house. And like and my my wife was happy. She's like, Well, technically you're learning German. Yeah, yeah, you're you're all the way. Because my, my wife my wife is German. My <laughs> wife. But she was very excited. She's like, You're technically learning German, but can you <laughs> stop screaming it? It's like, no, that's how you guys talk. No, between that and the refuse song, I have to scream. Can I scream? Yeah. Can I scream please? Oh, t- t- best needle drop of all time. <laughs> Man, I can't I can't hear that song anymore. 
anymore without thinking about the bear because the bear uses it to perfection in like every episode of their show. Dude, season two of the bear may may I'm gonna say it has one of the best soundtracks mm-hmm. in the modern era. Mm-hmm. It's a great show. Actually, kind of a good companion piece to this movie. Like oh, I get similar right. vibes and moments of it. Actually, funny you say that. I was watching season two of the bear when I watched this. Mm. Damn. Good call. So the year is 2022. Uh, the director, as I mentioned, is Ruben Oslin. The film stars Shelby Dean, Harris Dickinson, Woody Harrelson, Zlatko Burek, Henrik Dorson, Iris Berben, Sonny Mills, Dolly De Leon, and Vicky Berlin. Man, you made it through those names. I tried. I had to do a little look up for a couple of them. <laughs> the budget was uh, 10 million euros, and the film grossed 26 million worldwide. Currently has a 72% on Rotten Tomatoes, and as I mentioned, it was the winner of the Palme d'Or at Cannes, and uh, nominated for Best Original Screenplay, Best Directing, and Best Picture at the Academy Awards. So you said 10 million euros. Mm-hmm. So what's that in U.S. dollars? That is a good question. I think, if I'm not mistaken, the euro is just slightly above the dollar. So it's probably a couple more million than that. But let's uh, let's look it up real quick. What do you think, like 14 million? No, nah, not even that. Almost 11. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, oh, that's a lot closer than I thought it was. Yeah, it's not much higher. Yeah, it's pretty close. Man, they really made a great fucking movie on a small budget. I know. They stretched that $10 million. I mean, most of that probably is going to the yacht, right? You think? I mean, well, what else is there? There's the island, which you don't really have to pay for much of that. I mean, how much of this was actually shot on the boat, do you think? Mm, versus sets? Yeah. That's a good point. I mean... Like, how much of this was staged? Hmm. And where where was this shot? That is a great question. Let me look that up, actually. Wait, um, did you just do no research for this episode? What the uh, you know what? I did. I didn't do any. I didn't do any. So you knew going into this, it was just going to be me and you, and you <laughs> knew I wasn't researching a goddamn thing. It's located on the Greek island of Evoia, oh. is where they uh, filmed the island scenes. In the beach, the cruise's outdoor scenes were filmed at Catacola, Greece. Yeah, so I guess Greece was the main shooting location. Hey, shout out Greece. To your point, though, I, I don't know. You're right. It could be a lot of sets, but man, they get the visual flair of this movie. Like, you feel this yacht is expensive. Yeah, <laughs> like... I never want to go on a fucking cruise. Me fucking either. Priscilla's been trying to get me to go on a cruise forever. And I'm like, <sighs> man, Priscilla seems like a cruise person. <laughs> I'm like, maybe at best. And like, I mean that with offense. <laughs> like one day, one night is would be my limit. Like mm. I'm not going on no seven day fucking cruise. Did you see? This is just recent. There is a nine month cruise that just started. No. There's some company did a nine month cruise. And, and people on Twitter are saying definitely someone's getting murdered on this cruise. Oh, like, which just keep, keep an eye on it <laughs> let's just keep track of what's going on with this cruise that sounds fucking terrible nothing good comes from long durations on a boat nothing co- good comes from it has there ever been like a happy cruise movie <laughs> that's a good point because i'm thinking like this speed two mm-hmm. Bo is afraid got some bad stuff going on on a cruise there yeah <laughs> i don't know no nothing good that i can think of has ever happened on a cruise ship and like every episode of a sitcom that takes place on a cruise they always get trapped in the room Mm-hmm. Or they get, oh, like this movie, uh, end up on a deserted island. <laughs> yeah. Or, I mean, fuck, great, great example. Hunt for Red October. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing good comes from boats. Yeah. I mean, you, you know, you can make an argument that a submarine is a cruise ship. Mm-hmm. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Titanic. There you go. How was that like the fifth one we listed? <laughs> <laughs> I guess I don't know. I don't know if Titanic considered a cruise ship. It was cruising along. No, but, uh, it was the Titanic cruise liner. They, you know what? I stand, I stand down. You're right. Yeah. Speaking of cruise ships, why don't we watch this trailer and we can get a little bit more of this uh, cruise in our life. Huh? This will be the first time I've ever seen this trailer. I think I've seen it once before. Uh, and if I remember correctly, it does sell you pretty well on what the vibe of this movie is. So here we go. Again, I probably should have watched it. <laughs> so is this runway casting for a grumpy brand or a smiley brand? I love that guy, by the way. What else has he been brand? in? I don't know, but he steals the scene that he's in. I'm going to look him up, though. Suddenly I'm dressed in something way less expensive. It's H&M, yay! Balenciaga, <laughs> and H&M, Balenciaga, and H&M! <laughs> you looks paid for the tickets, not bad, huh? <laughs> so what do you do? I sell shit. <laughs> I fucking love that dude. When he gets on the intercom system or later, just I sell shit. Oh my god, oh my god. Anybody saying no. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. I command you. Enjoy the moment. Fuck that lady. No. I hate that lady. No. <laughs> what? 
You say no to me? No, no. Oh, sorry, it's yes. N yeah, no. Yes. <laughs> oh, yes! <laughs> the saints. Do you think it's possible to wash them? The saints. Oh, my God. I don't think that's possible, ma'am, because this is a motorized vessel. Yeah. So we don't have any sails. It was sails. <laughs> yes. Well, then, in that case, we will clean the sail. <laughs> yeah. oh, yes. Oh, this song. <laughs> to love. Oh, God, the old British couple. Yeah, that God got a good laugh out of me. A Russian capitalist. And an American oh. communist. On a $250 million luxury yacht. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that scene is so fucking gross. The ship is going under. <laughs> <laughs> really bad this is really really bad <laughs> <laughs> i really should have watched that trailer before <laughs> saying no to watching this movie for like six months straight I i'm determined to find out who this interviewer guy is i'm going through the cast list like one by one I don't know, I'll keep you informed if I find out. But uh, yeah, man, no, this, this is a great trailer. Uh, I think it perfectly encapsulates what this movie is. And I guess if you haven't seen the movie, um, a brief little like description of what we're dealing with. <laughs> Buckle the fuck up. Yeah. A brief little description of what we're dealing with is this is a satirical comedy that gets very dark at times, but it is basically lampooning the rich. Just overall, any kind of rich person you could think of, businessman, influencer, and everything in between. And it does it with such a deft hand that it is shocking, honestly. Like, it's shocking on this rewatch how funny this fucking movie is, how every joke lands perfectly. True. So, yeah, Ruben Oslin, as I mentioned, uh, he won the Palme d'Or for The Square at the 71st Cannes Film Festival. And then a month later, he announces he's making this movie, and then he comes back for the 75th Cannes Film Festival and wins that one. The Palme d'Or winner there, too. So this dude is just a fucking legend. Yeah, he, can, he can't be stopped. Can't be stopped. Can't wait to see what he does next, too. I guess we can go ahead and get this out of the way, too, because I know it's going to be a topic, but we briefly mentioned earlier. It is unfortunate that this movie was so well lauded and the performances are so regarded that uh, one of the cast members, unfortunately, couldn't be a part of that because... As you mentioned, uh, Cheryl B. Dean, who plays Yaya on this movie, did pass away before this movie was released. This was her last performance. Yeah. Tragically, unfortunately, at the age of 32, because of uh, bacterial sepsis from an injury she sustained in a car accident. Wild. Which is crazy because it, it so rapidly occurred. Like, she said she was feeling unwell, rushed to the hospital, and then she was dead within hours. Yeah. And I'm watching this movie on the rewatch, going into it knowing that, and I'm just like, she was 32 when that happened. I'm 33 now, and it's it's just weird as a you know someone watching this movie to know that this person who was who's so talented she's so good in this movie to know that like once this movie was released and she was getting all the acclaim she was getting for performance to know that she clearly had like a huge career right in front of her and she's playing this character that is an influencer and she even says like the only way i can succeed really is if i just get if i'm just a trophy wife yeah, yeah, yeah. i don't know there's some kind of weird I don't know. There's just something weird about that. It's fascinating, but it's it's unfortunate, like I said, that she's, you know, we won't really get to see where her career goes after this. But what a final performance she gives in this movie, because Yaya is so... There's something so interesting about this character because she, you know, they have this opening scene with, well, I mean, we'll come back to the modeling scene, but this opening scene with her and Carl, where, you know, they're fighting about the money and who's going to pay the bill and she makes more than him. And then she admits later on, like the next scene that, yeah, she was manipulating him and she's so good at manipulating people that she doesn't even realize when she's doing it. And then to like see that reflected in Abigail at the end of the movie and right. Yaya is on the receiving end of it. Like it's such, it's so fucking good and so well played by 
everyone in this movie, but but Charlotte B. Dean is is so good in this movie. Yeah, she absolutely kills it. Yeah, I kind of want to go back and just watch all of her work now, <laughs> which it, was, it wasn't that much. I know she's in one of the Death Race movies, which that sounds interesting. She was? Yeah, she's in the third one, I believe. They made three of them? Oh, they've made a bunch of those things. Those things are like straight to DVD now, straight to streaming. Really? Yeah. I didn't know that. In fact, let me look it up. There, There's a there's a lot. But they're so bad. Damn, well, it's never stopped movies from getting made before. <laughs> you know what? Good fucking point uh let's see death rays i'm just gonna look up i'm sure there's like a franchise button in here somewhere (laughs) i forgot paul ws anderson made that one in 2008 oh fuck that's right yeah um, anyways, while I'm looking this up, yeah, this the, the opening scene here with the uh all the male models. So fucking funny. It's so good. Talking about are you uh dealing with a happy brand, you know, or a or a sad brand, H and M or Balenciaga. It's so fucking funny. And this interviewer, I, I'm still looking him up. He it, absolutely steals this scene. He does. He like he rides this line between this character could easily be so annoying, but he plays it so perfectly. Like he gets you into the inner like you all these guys are dour just standing in this room and he brings the energy into it and then right after carl doesn't take that with him into the actual interview which i found fascinating like he just goes in dead faced yeah oh man look at this this oh is like there's like five God. of these one two three four five six of these movies death race 2050 death race beyond anarchy <laughs> good lord <sighs> death race movie film for theaters <laughs> yeah man they, they don't stop anyway so the triangle of sadness if you haven't seen the movie it is shown right up here at the beginning. It's the the space between your eyebrows, I guess, that determines like what your look is like as a model. Yeah. The casting director rela- he wants Carl to relax his triangle of sadness to have a different look to him. I don't know. I, Carl is the unsung hero, I think, of this movie because yeah. this character, as Harris Dickinson plays him, is so fucking funny to me, like without trying to be. Because every scene that he's in, whether it's with Abigail or Yaya, he's always trying to get to the point of something, but he can never get there. Yeah. And I just, I don't know. Like, like watching him with Yaya trying to have like a, a conversation about, I don't want us to fall into stereotypical gender roles. I want us to be equals. And then the very end of the movie is him being a man whore. Yeah, pretty much. It's so fucking good. Every every beat of this movie is so well written. It's so well played. Like this is this is a deserved winner. It's just (laughs) such a like I don't know how to say this without sounding pretentious. It's just such a smart movie. Yeah, no, it is. It's lampooning things exactly without being over the top. Without like it's it's so clear what Ruben Oslin is doing in his satire here, but he still somehow makes it not like you said. Like it's a smart movie, but it doesn't sound. It doesn't feel pretentious. Yes, exactly. I could easily see the wrong people taking the wrong message away from this movie and like not seeing the force of the trees. You know what I mean? Well, they could like, I feel like there's a lot of people who, when you say like misunderstand this movie, it's like when they're divvying up the first like octopus uh-huh. and she's like, <laughs> wait, wait, why? What's that big pile? She's like, well, that's mine. She's mm-hmm. like, why do you get more than everyone else? Well, cause I caught it. I cleaned it. I cooked it. Mm-hmm. I made the fire. Mm-hmm. She's like, well, we all helped too. What did you do? We well, brought we that big that log. log from over there to here. <laughs> okay. It, it was over there and we moved it over here. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> What's so great about that stuff is like right before that, maybe my favorite character in the movie, Dimitri and the captain are having these like quote offs about socialism, about capitalism, about Marxism and all these things. And then they immediately like, as Dimitri gets on the island, he becomes a socialist. Mm-hmm. Everybody's needs get met and everybody contributes and everybody who's abled, you know, like he, th- the influx of ideologies is so fucking funny. Like as soon as Abigail starts saying that, well, I did most of the work, so therefore I get most of the rewards. That's when Dimitri flips on it. I, I don't know. It's so it's so good. Well, going back to him and the captain, it's just like just the little things like the idea of a Russian capitalist uh-huh. and an American socialist. <laughs> I know. So fucking good. And the fact that he's like, I'm, I'm a shit socialist. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, no, man. That the, the whole ship going down scene, it's so perfect. And like, not to outdo the rest of the movie, because every scene of this movie to me is just damn near flawless. The epitome of sheer chaos. Uh-huh. 
Like, you've got the Refuse song, and then you've got Drunken Dimitri and the Captain just on the intercom. I think one of the best moments is when Dimitri finds the intercom first, and he's just like, the ship is going down. Yeah. And you have just, fuck, oh god, the toilet's just exploding. I know, man, the toilet just erupting. Jesus. Ugh. I'm never taking a fucking cruise. Nope, no thank you. And dude, I mean, shout out to, I don't remember the lady's name, I don't know if they say it, but shout out to the, the, the lady that puts all this into motion, because that actress gets the shit end of this of the deal like no pun intended but like oh man so i guess if you haven't seen the movie let's let's back up a little bit so carl and yaya are a couple carl is a model like like a kind of a struggling male model yaya is an influencer who they make a point of that she makes more money than him and they kind of have this argument at this restaurant where carl is sitting there as yaya's on her phone the check gets dropped off yaya doesn't even look up and she goes oh thanks babe for paying and he had made no indication he was about to pay yep so they have this argument about why do you assume i would pay you make more money than me it's not about the money blah 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 but then the crux of their whole relationship comes into play because yaya says look I'm an influencer and a model, and the best I can hope for is that I become a trophy wife. Yeah. Which I find so interesting that she's with Carl, who is a struggling male model. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, lady, you, you've picked the wrong one. You've hitched your wagon to the wrong one. But Carl says, I'm going to make you love me. Like, I'm, I'm going to, I hear you, but I'm going to make it happen. It's almost threatening. It is. It really is. And then they, they get on this uh on this yacht this luxury cruise and it's revealed that oh they were given this cruise because yaya's an influencer she was invited onto this cruise for free and she's amongst all these russian and german and british oligarchs and entrepreneurs and things and this is where the crux of the movie is is on this cruise and you see right away the disparity between the working class and the rich. Yep. And maybe my favorite way that they show that is this lady who's kind of the lead crew member, Paula, is hyping up her crew of like, hey, just I don't want to hear no at all on this cruise. Everything the, the guests want, they get. Even if it's an illegal substance, they get it. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Because at the end of the trip, we all get a bunch of money, right? And she's like chanting and they're having this this moment. And then it just cuts to the crew members, like the cleaning crew, uh, you know, the indigenous people or like the immigrants or things like that. And they're just sitting in silence down in the bunks, basically. Yep. It's such a good parallel. And again, there is no way to misinterpret this movie. I don't know how people do it, but it is so clear what Ruben Austin is saying. And I love the switch when they actually get to the island of how that that reflects negatively on when it's reversed as well like nobody comes out looking good in this movie i would say mm, agree yeah so before we get there though we do go to this fashion show and um uh, we get interested to yaya doing her her modeling and Mally, I, th- I think this will come as no surprise to you but i don't get high-end fashion at all dude <laughs> me neither but i will say this because when they're at the the modeling uh interview the the interviewer was talking about hashtag everyone's equal hashtag stop climate change and the gag because they're at the fashion show, the the screen that's behind the models says everyone's equal. And <laughs> they talk about there is a new climate coming in the world of fashion. It's God damn it. The satire is so fucking good in this movie. Yeah, like my idea of high fashion is Jason Momoa and Fast X. There you go. I mean, that's the pinnacle, right? Yeah, you can't top it. I think about that purple outfit like once a week now after seeing that movie. As you should. It sticks with you. It's ingrained into my fucking memory. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So when they're at the, I forgot to talk about this too, when they're at the uh, the dinner and they have their argument in the car on the way home, Yaya tells Carl that talking about money isn't sexy. And I got to say, do you think it's sexy? I don't know. It depends on the circumstances. Uh, <laughs> if Priscilla came in the room and told me we won the lottery, I would think that's very fucking sexy. <laughs> but what if I walked in the room and was like, just spent $300 at Target? Well, that's, that's what Priscilla does anyway. Yeah. So. <laughs> You know, I guess, see, that's the thing. It's all circumstantial, right? (laughs) Talking about money can definitely be sexy. It just depends on the circumstances. I guess. And then the chauffeur overhears all of this happening. uh, And then when Yaya gets out of the car, he tells Carl, you need to fight for her if you love her. And, you know, he interprets that as I need to yell at her in an elevator about money. Yeah, that's, you know, (laughs) it's a choice. It's certainly a choice. Carl is always on his heels in this movie. I do love it. And I love how Yaya treats him like uh, like a child, basically, because like... I mean, he is a fucking child. He is 100% a child. But the way, like, when he's on the island and he talk, starts talking to Abigail, because they, she says, oh, well, you know, you guys let the fire die out and you stole my pretzel sticks. And he starts talking to her and using his hands. And she goes, put your hands down. <laughs> put your hands down. He goes, well, I'm defending myself. And she goes, stop defending yourself. You defending yourself is putting pain on her. <laughs> 
And he's like, yes, dear. And he kind of just lowers his head. God damn, Carl is so fucking funny in this movie. Uh, anyway. Let's get onto the fucking boat. Sure, let's get on the fucking boat. So, I do want to say, Harris Dickinson is playing a character in this new Iron Claw movie that's coming out. He's the third brother, right? I believe so, yeah. When this episode comes out, the movie will have already come out, but obviously recording in advance, but I'm so curious to see what he does in that movie. Dude, I'm, I, that's one of my most anticipated movies of this year. Same. I mean, there's only a few, you know, a, as we record this, there's only like two weeks left of this year, yeah. but- yeah, that, that's why I'm hesitant to put out like a best of list because I'm like, I, I kind of wait for that Iron Claw. Man. Yeah, there's still I still have a number of movies to see like Iron Claw. I still haven't seen Holdovers, yep. Anatomy of a Fall. Yep, yep. There was another one in there, too. I can't remember. But yeah, no, all of those I still got to see. And in Vulcan. But um, it's so easy for Carl as the character to get lost amongst the rest of this cast. Because when we get on the boat, we kind of leave Carl and Yaya for a good bit. A little bit. I don't know. I, I think it's it'd be detrimental to, you know, we have to mention how good this character is. But yeah, he gets on there and... Did you did you ever watch Crashing that HBO show with uh, Pete Holmes? Um, a couple episodes, yeah. You know the guy that um Lauren Lapkus his his ex wife in that show leaves him for. I can't remember that guy's name, that actor, but that's what this guy looks like. That's working on this crew. He's got like a man bun and a beard, and he's like taking his shirt off and oiling in the sun. Yeah, he's me if I took care of myself. <laughs> exactly. And they're having this conversation, and Yaya asks Carl, do you think he's hot? And Carl's like, he's all right. And then Carl goes, do you think he's hot? And she goes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're so good together. But um, it's interesting because Carl then goes to complain about that, and then that guy ends up getting fired. Yeah, just gets put on a little boat and sent off into the fucking ocean. I know. That guy dodged a fucking bullet. And then, dude, the craziest bit is when... When, is after that when he asked to see the wedding rings oh my god so <laughs> awkward she's like i'll wear it so you can see what it looks like on a hand he's like hmm yes quite <laughs> then he finds out the price i know that's my favorite bit is he has to do that look that we've all done where you're pretending to think about it but really you're just thinking how godly expensive it is yep. <laughs> but you don't want to appear cheap so you're like hmm yes yeah that's a fair price for that twenty eight thousand euro ring <laughs> <laughs> and I, that was confusing me. Do all luxury cruises just carry engagement rings you can buy? Uh, that's a question for a person with more money than me. Yeah, I was going to say, why Why am I asking you? Yes. <laughs> I guess it would make sense. Like, if you're going to be on, especially for like a long, a longer duration of a cruise that people would propose on them, I guess. Do they say how long the cruise was supposed to last? That is a good question. I don't. I don't even know if they were heading to a destination or if they were just, you know, floating in the water there, basically. I don't know. Yeah, I don't, I feel like, I don't think they mentioned how long the cruise was supposed to go. They might. Like, I feel like Woody Harrelson's character might say it at some point. I mean, Dimitri says they're going to go to Cuba for a tax haven later on. Fair point. <laughs> But uh, no, I don't know. Well, we can't trust anything Dimitri says in this whole movie. That's true. And speaking of it, we get introduced to him. He's just, are you not going to eat the pasta? <laughs> Zalto Burek as Dimitri is so good. <laughs> so good. He's so good. I love how he's like, yeah, he talks about, because Yaya's just taking pictures of her pretending to eat pasta, but then she goes, oh, no, I have a gluten intolerance. Yeah, and it's upsetting because that pasta looks so good. It looked great. It looked a lot better than the pasta from uh, The Flash, I'll tell you that much. Oh. And then, you know, Carl asks him what he does. He says, I sell shit. Yeah, and then just kind <laughs> to sit there in silence for a second yeah but even like the minor characters in this movie because his wife he like he's trying to explain to carl that he's like that he sells fertilizer and she just leans in off camera with a phone she goes honey can i what do you think about this can i have this and he goes yeah and then he continues on talking the first time i watched this me and my wife were both my confused wife. i was like wait so is one his wife and one his mistress i don't know but he because he does find the, you know, the woman that starts all this shit washed up on the shore later, and he does have a cry fest about it. So, I don't know. I thought maybe one... Yeah, I think the older woman was technically his wife, but they never really have any moments together. They're just kind of sitting there at the table. And then, like, when they're at the bar later on, the the other woman is there at the bar with Yaya, and they she says that's his woman. So, I don't know. It's a good question. I wouldn't be surprised if that was the case. Yeah. But anyways, they they have this moment at the bar, actually, where we can talk about it now. But I thought it was so funny that Yaya's even got Carl editing her photos of her on this cruise because he's got his laptop out and you can see he's editing her photos. Yep. Like, every time we cut to Yaya and Carl, Carl's just taking more pictures of her. And I, I just thought that was funny. God, I fucking hate influencer culture. Same here. I hope that dies in 2023. I doubt it will. But in 2024? Well, now we're in 2024. I hope 
hope it's, it died from the previous year. <laughs> uh, like, dude, I will. Like, I make it a fucking point because I'm a piece of shit. <laughs> if I see someone, like, filming a TikTok or any of that, I will walk directly <laughs> through that fucking frame. Yeah. I can't stand watching the videos on, on TikTok and Twitter of people just doing the most for the views and the likes like i don't know i mean it goes back to you know it with ingrid goes west and stuff like that that we've done on the show but like it's just such a culture that i cannot comprehend we are legitimately like we are like old people now we, we are we're starting to get there it's wild yeah i don't understand i'm like i'm so close to being that dude that sits on his porch yelling at kids to get off my fucking property <laughs> you're clint eastwood in grand torino just sitting there just scowling the, honestly <laughs> the only difference i just don't have any actual property mm-hmm, or the racism right <laughs> <laughs> you don't have that in <laughs> Anyway, so this rich guy that's there on the cruise by himself, Yarmo is his name, the bald guy. Oh, okay. I was like, it's like you just said rich guy. I was like, you need to be so much more specific. Yeah, I, I, I know. I realize that now. And Dimitri looks at Carl and is like, hey, man, look, he's hunting. And he goes up to their two ladies, Yaya and the other woman's name, who I don't think we get. And he like, he plays coy and like, oh, I'm, you know, I'm here by myself. Can you guys, will you ladies just take a picture of me? Because he mentions, oh, a girl was supposed to come on this cruise with me. And then she backed out last minute. And she's like, okay, well, take a picture with us and you could post it you can you know because we're attractive women you could post on social media whatever and it's so funny that like as dimitri and carl realizing that that's what's happening they're like oh yeah because they were mocking him beginning and then you hear his girl say more boobs yeah yeah (laughs) (laughs) oh that's great and then man this whole the whole crew of this yacht like the the white tired ones they all give off big reno 911 energy to me oh my god yes <laughs> especially paola the main crew lady they are all just they're all just new boot goofing they are new boot goofing and then man the scene with the 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 jacuzzi i love this recurring motif because the the woman here says it too she says everyone's equal why don't we swap roles like the everyone's equal motif comes back a lot throughout this movie and it kind of goes hand in hand with the next thing that you see on that screen at the runway show where it says cynicism masquerading as optimism yep and i was like that's the movie literally telling you word for word what this movie is yep 100 percent. this all starts because this rich woman can't just enjoy her career she has to put the crew members in a position that is uncomfortable for them because she says you know this moment's perfect you know and she's got this woman literally sitting next to her at a jacuzzi just with a champagne bottle and she's like like why don't you go for a swim you know you, you work hard why don't you get to go for a swim and she goes well i can't because i'm working <laughs> yeah and she's like no no but yes but wait yeah no yes what no she's like i i can't do this she goes, are you telling me no she goes no i'm not saying no it's just that i you know, I can't. And she goes, oh, so you're telling me no. And man, this woman is the bane of this whole movie. She like, sets the whole thing in motion, yeah. She puts all this shit in motion. Because she does that, and then she's like, I want the whole crew to go for a swim. Even the engine workers. Everyone has to leave their post and then go on this water slide. <laughs> Which admittedly is a really funny scene, but because of that, the cooks have to leave the seafood that they're cooking, yeah. which then makes it off and then gives everyone fucking food poisoning later on. It's so brilliant. Gosh, she is the most insufferable fucking character throughout this movie. Dude, uh, man, she, when everything, when the ship starts going down, though, she Oof. gets it. It is brutal. God, oh, she is... That refused needle drop where she is simultaneously puking and shitting on a toilet when she's already caked in diarrhea. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a bold image to put in your movie. And this actress, God bless her for being down for this shit because it's you're asking a lot from this sophisticated person to do this stuff. Like she's slipping and sliding around and the toilet's exploding. Just getting the shit beat out of her <laughs> by a fucking cruise ship. Literally getting the shit beat out of her. <laughs> yeah, li- literally. Literally. Like just like getting like slid across the floor mm-hmm. in the wall. Oh, and, like, and then like trying God. to grasp onto the toilet as she's sliding by it to puke more. Oh, oh. God. She's committed, man. The first time I watched this movie, we like started watching it while we were eating dinner and mm-hmm. thank fucking God we had finished eating by the time we got to <laughs> this scene absolutely and then i do love there's a shot of uh dimitri's wife who now wants to be an influencer because she's got dimitri taking pictures of her like carl was taking pictures of yaya oh that's right and he's just like bare chested just legs spread on this reclining chair trying to take pictures of her (laughs) 
It's a really great image. No, but yeah, this this all gets set in motion because of this one thing. And I love how well written it is, like how perfectly encapsulated it is. Because you would think, oh, this is just the seasickness coming into play. And then they tell you right away, like nothing in this movie is secret, which I find incredible. Like how well they're able to switch tones and locations and motifs so easily because everything is so structured perfectly to get you there. Yeah. Because I remember before watching this movie for the first time being like, where is this fucking movie going? What do we? What is the point? What are we doing? Yeah. And then on a rewatch, it all clicks into place it's it's so well done and none of this food looks appetizing honestly except that burger and fries that the captain fucking eat <laughs> dude that burger and fry i was like re-watching this movie this morning just like god damn right it's like the fucking burger and fries in the menu i was just about to say i'm getting big menu vibes on this movie at this point god damn, i would kill for just a burger and fries right now you know what i think that's what i'm gonna do after this episode i'm gonna go run and get maybe to five guys or something and get me a burger and fries that sounds great i'm having leftover pizza oh, so that's a j sent to a burger and fries right i mean that's in the same whale house yeah we gotta talk about woody allison man i knew watching this movie for the first time that he was in this movie he's not in it for long no god damn does he bring it he steals the fucking show but i remember being like okay i know what he's in this movie where is he where is he showing up and i genuinely didn't recognize his voice until he appeared on the other side of that door like really yeah yeah yeah. because i i guess because i was so in like drawn in by the rest of the the cast and the crew and everything that like i completely forgot about it at that point and i didn't recognize his voice okay but man i love his character so fucking much because like the whole time they're like oh we we haven't seen the captain where's the captain and he keeps telling uh paola that he's sick he can't come out and he's clearly that he's just fucking wasted my favorite little bit with him though is just like we can when can we do the captain's dinner yeah any day but thursday is good okay yeah thursday is good yeah no no yeah. thursday is bad no no thursday is that no thursday and i like how he's like well we gotta eat dinner every night right she's like yes he's like okay so thursday's no different we'll do the captain's dinner thursday night <laughs> It's good. It's really good. And then him and his his captain outfit standing next to the first officer Darius, and they both have to lean yes. as they're holding their champagne glasses. It's so fucking funny. Well, and then yeah, like it's in the trailer, but that whole conversation with the lady about the sales. The sales, yes, we got to talk about the sales. So she starts Powell early and says, "Hey, I, you know, I was having a beautiful day yesterday. Everything was perfect, but then I looked up and the sales were dirty." And Powell is like, "Huh." Okay. What the fuck is she talking about? Well, it's not even that. It's just like, who? I, I, I just would have to bite my tongue and be like, who gives a shit, lady? It's the sales. She's like, can you clean them? And then what else is like, well, man, that would be impossible because there are no sales on the ship. It's a motorized vessel. And she just <laughs> looks at him and is like, but they're dirty. But that that is, what? as someone who has waited on the rich before, because oh, yeah. I've worked at a, a high-end bar. It's spot on. It is. Like, it's just so... No, none of them could ever admit that they don't know what they're talking about. Yeah. Like, it's just... I don't know, man. And, and this goes back to my whole premise of this season. Like, my whole standpoint this season is we got to eat the rich. Like, I'm, I'm we got to just be done with them. I mean, hey, listen, I'm a big Hannibal fan, mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. absolutely, let's fucking go. Um, and I, I do want to go back, because during that scene where, you know, the woman's like, I want everyone to go for a swim. That's what I want. And it cuts to the chef down in the kitchen and he looks at his cooks and goes all right guys you're all going for a swim you're going to the water slide and they all just like unfazed by it it's such a good fucking reaction yeah just like <laughs> oh this shit again like mm-hmm. of course we are mm-hmm. and then woody harrelson when he's trying to talk to that woman about the sales he has a glass of champagne in his hand that he doesn't drink from but then a waiter walks by and he puts the glass on her plate and then takes another full glass yep. i thought that was a really good gag yep. <laughs> You can feel the the improvisation coming from Woody Harrelson in this movie, and I th- it it plays so perfectly. Oh, couldn't he, again? He again? He's not in this movie for long, but goddamn, does he steal the scenes he's in? He, he's so. I mean, I know Woody Harrelson is a lauded actor, but he is very underrated. I feel like when we talk about the really good character actors, like oh, agreed. he can pop in for a movie for a scene and just steal the fucking show. And he's he's maybe in what would you say the runtime? Maybe like. 10 15 minutes of this movie maybe i mean maybe yeah i don't even think his actual screen time is that much yeah between cutting between him and dimitri and later and a lot of the time he's behind a fucking door just talking yeah <laughs> Uh, I don't know. The, the, this whole dinner scene is is the, the tension, the way they build it up is so good. It's wild. The first course of this meal is fucking oysters. And you know those oysters are fucking off because the chef told you they were early. Yeah. <laughs> and then this old British couple that's sitting with Carl and Yaya when they're like, oh, we create, uh, we're pioneers of engineering when it comes to upholding democracy. And he's like, okay, well, what do you engineer? He goes, oh, hand grenade. What a way to say that. <laughs> 
<laughs> but that's exactly what it is. It's it's such a good counterpoint to Dimitri because they're like, well, what do you do? He goes, I sell shit. That's yep. the first thing he says. And this guy has to talk around the fact that he sells hand grenades at landmines. <laughs> well, and then like they bring that bit back in a, like a few minutes later when he's like, oh, honey, I think this is one of ours. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Cut to explosion. <laughs> yeah. And also, this is the season, I think, of oysters being eaten in a palmed ore movie because we did Blue is the Warmest Color and that has an oyster eating scene as well. That's <laughs> right. There's some weird connections happening in this season. And also, who brings a fucking baby on a luxury cruise? This yeah. baby during this scene is just the cherry on top of how ridiculous all this shit is. I know this sounds horrible, but I'm glad the baby didn't survive to the island. The baby does not survive, I don't believe. You're right. I didn't even think about that until just now. <laughs> yeah, we do not see that baby again. Mm-hmm. And the fact that Woody Harrelson gets saved from all of this shit because he doesn't enjoy fine dining and he's eating a burger and fries, that's great. Love that. And you cannot go wrong with a burger and fries. You can't do it. I don't know if you remember this, but there is, you know, for the advertising for this movie, the like the posters and things. Again, I don't because I didn't see any of it. <laughs> One of the posters for the movie was um, this woman puking right here at the table. Yes. I So I did see that poster after the fact. Mm-hmm. and was like, oh, my God. I know. What a wild poster, right? But I do remember them changing the, like the color of her puke to be like gold. Yeah, it's gold on the poster, which is just... It's brilliant. <laughs> it tells you everything you need to fucking know about this movie. Well, I, I love that. And then like, whenever we had to make green band versions of trailers at my old job, we, we always had to like, if it had blood in the movie, we had to darken it. Like we had to make it appear like it was mud or ink. Yeah, like dark brown. Right, right. And so I'm wondering if maybe there's a similar rule to fucking vomit that I just don't know about because I don't have to deal with it that much yeah but that was that poster i remember seeing it be like what a way to advertise your movie just an old woman puking gold so fucking good dude <laughs> Speaking of so good, I love the chemistry between the captain and Dimitri. It's so fucking funny. Like, I love how everyone is losing their minds, puking and shitting and passing out. And it's just these two drunks having a quote off about fucking capitalism and socialism and communism. Yeah. It's so good. And it's even better because it starts with Dimitri having the joke about how can you tell who's a communist? He reads Marx and Lenin. How can you tell an anti communist? He understands them. And then they immediately go to quoting both of those men and just reveling in their wisdom. <laughs> God damn it, it's funny. I love Woody Harrelson and uh, Zotko Burek in this movie. They're both so well played. I, it's kind of my only complaint about the movie is I want more of these two characters. Oh, yeah. like it's. I'm kind of sad Woody's character doesn't make it to the island. I am too, but it's also kind of fitting. Like, I don't know. I just... The captain went down with the ship, man. Yeah, true. Very true. <laughs> Speaking of going down with the ship, Dimitri, drunk, is, he finds the intercom and he's like, the ship is going under, mayday. And then he just starts laughing. He goes, the ship is not going under. <laughs> and then Woody Harrelson coming in drunk too with his shirt off and just joining him and just shouting about how my country murdered Martin Luther King and Malcolm X except for the intercom. Oh my god, it's so good. All that while everyone on the ship is passing out and vomiting and shitting and the toilets are exploding. And like sliding around oh. on the fucking floors, hitting the walls. <laughs> like, meanwhile, these two drunk fucking buffoons. Oh no. It's a perfect encapsulation of everything about this movie, but it's so funny to watch these rich people do all of this stuff and then the way it's flipped for the survivors when they land on the this island afterwards like nobody learns anything in this movie <laughs> yeah let's 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 get to the island shall we absolutely i would be remiss if i didn't mention that refuse needle drop right is this woman both simultaneously uh, we've mentioned it so many times already. i know but we gotta talk i just man it's just the perfect image she's puking and shitting and she goes Can I scream? <laughs> so good so as all of this is happening, we see a bunch of pirates rolling up on like little like motorboats and they throw a grenade and just blow up this fucking yacht. It's <laughs> <laughs> there's something so great about all that happening as like you can hear that guy yeah go hey honey I believe this is one of ours explosion. It's so fucking good. Because it's just like, it cuts, like, he picks it up, Mm -hmm. and it just cuts to a wide shot Mm -hmm. of the yacht out in the water. You just hear machine gun fire, and in the back of the yacht just fucking explodes. Yep. Yep. It's so good. So, there's a couple of people that survive this uh, this yacht blowing up. It's uh, Carl and Yaya, who we haven't really seen much of in this whole time. It's uh, Yarmo, the rich guy, the bald guy. It's Dimitri, a guy named Nelson, who we can't (laughs) talk about. (laughs) Maybe... 
Maybe the best gag of the movie is they are convinced that he might be a pirate, but he also might have worked on the ship and they didn't recognize him. That's right. And then there's this other one we didn't talk about, but this woman who uh, her husband says she suffered a stroke, this German woman, and uh, it affected how she's able to speak. The only phrases she can speak really are in the Vulcan, which means in the clouds. In the Vulcan. And she can say no in German, which is nine. And that's pretty much all she can say. Nine. So they all survive. Am I forgetting anybody? Oh, and uh, Paola, the, the head crew member. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's all of them. They end up on this island and then everyone seems kind of nonplussed by their this whole interaction. Like, no one seems really to mind that much that they're on this island. Yeah. <laughs> but it becomes sort of a Lord of the Flies situation because this lifeboat washes up on shore and one of the crew members that was on the yacht that we did, we kind of met briefly throughout the movie. They show her a little bit here and there named Abigail. Right. She's in this lifeboat. There's water and chips. And they disperse it amongst them all themselves. And I don't. Th- we don't really get a sense of how long they're on this island, but Dimitri does grow a full beard. Yeah. in the time span, so it's been it's been quite a bit. But Paola proves herself to be like the resourceful one. She's able to catch a fish. She's able to cook the fish and clean it. You mean Abigail? Oh, I'm sorry. Abigail. Yes, Abigail. Paola tries to take control uh, because she says, you know, these people are my responsibility because I work for the yacht company. An accident happened on the yacht, so therefore I'm in charge. Yep. And Abigail proves herself, you know, resourceful because she's able to do all that. She's able to make a fire. And then as she's cooking the the octopus that she catches, she starts divvying it up the food. And every time she gives a piece to one of the people, she keeps a piece for herself. One for you. One for me. Yep. One for you. One for me. And Paola goes, why do you get to keep this much and everyone else gets so little? She goes, well, because I did all the work. Yeah. And then this is where everyone starts trying to bargain. It, it, it immediately becomes a capitalist society. Like, here's what I can do per, to provide. Well, you know, socialist. socialist. I'm sorry. Yes. Okay. Here's what I can do to earn things. And like, everyone's ideology gets flipped right away. Just immediately. But I think maybe the only part about this third act that I don't like is I wish they didn't tell you that Nelson was a pirate. Yeah. I really wish they would have kept that gag going until the end of the movie. <laughs> yeah, that's a fair point. So because uh, Abigail has kind of risen in the ranks to prove that like, she's kind of in charge, everyone starts catering to her and she's in charge of who gets to sleep and the lifeboat versus who gets to sleep out by the fire. And so she starts using that power to manipulate everyone involved. So she uses Carl <laughs> as a, uh, a, a sex, sex slave, slave. basically. <laughs> And she, you know, basically puts Paula in her place. She's like, you know, on the boat. I worked in the the deck, but out here I'm the captain. And she starts asking everyone around, "Who am I?" And they all go, "Well, you're the captain." <laughs> And everyone who says she gives more fish to, and that's like it's such a good fucking scene, dude. I fucking love it so much. <laughs> um, but this character, Abigail, perfectly encapsulates exactly what the movie is. Like it goes back to that notion of quote unquote everybody's equal, like that bullshit motif that you hear throughout the movie. And that other quote that you heard at the beginning, the cynicism masquerading as optimism, that is the that that's it. That's that's the mission statement. Yeah. And it's so perfectly encapsulated here. I, I do have a question. Do you think there's do you think there's enough room in that lifeboat for everybody to sleep? No way. You don't think so? No. Hmm. Maybe you're right. I mean, for everyone to like stand, sure. Yeah, I guess that's true. But for all of them to like lay down and sleep, no fucking way. Not a chance. Yeah, you might be right. But yeah, it's, it's dude, when we cut later on, because it's, it's kind of implied like Carl is doing things to get to be able to sleep in the lifeboat with Abigail, but it's never really shown until the very end when he is just the hard cut to him furiously trying to pleasure her. It is so abrupt yeah. and it's like, oh, okay, holy shit. <laughs> And the fact that they're doing all this shit for pretzel sticks, which is another fucking great gag. Which is maybe like the worst thing you can eat. I know. When you're, you know, thirsty. I know. I know. Between that and the Avion aerosol spray that they keep spraying into their mouths. Yeah. Oh my God. It's the worst. Like it's, it's such a useless fucking thing. Yeah, there's a great scene where, like, Nelson and Carl and uh, the stroke woman get left out by the fire, and the ladies get to sleep in the lifeboat. I don't know where Dimitri and uh, Jeremo goes, but they're like, hey, Abigail left her backpack here. What do you think's inside? Oh, there's a box of pretzel sticks. Maybe if we cut a little hole in it, we can each get one pretzel stick. And they eat the whole fucking thing. And they eat the whole fucking thing. And then not only that, they fail at burning the package in the fire because yep. she finds it. Dude, the funniest... G- joke to me in the whole fucking movie though is when like they hear like the noise in the woods and they all run away <laughs> and they're all just sitting at the fire and 
all you hear because they leave what's her name like the German woman behind mm-hmm. so they're all just like sitting there at the fire and all you hear in the background is her going yeah. <laughs> the weird sound coming from the bushes that sounds like this crazy bird yes and then it just turns out to be a donkey it's so fucking good <laughs> Like, the paranoia on this island, too, is great. Because, like, Yaya is just sitting there on the beach. And she goes, fine, I'll take the pretzel sticks. <laughs> you're like, what the fuck's happening? And then it's revealed that Carl negotiated sleeping in the lifeboat with Abigail for the box of pretzel sticks to give to Yaya. Yep. <laughs> He's, like, trying to tell her, like, Yaya, I gotta, I gotta go sleep in there with her. Who knows what she can offer us? And she's like, I know what you guys are doing. And I know it's something. There's nothing sexual. And she goes, no kissing, nothing like that. And he goes, well, Yaya, I think she's expecting something. <laughs> He goes, what, what about like a massage? He goes, no, definitely not a massage. <laughs> and then as Carl's going over there and he sees that Abigail has written in the dust on the side of the boat, love boat with an arrow pointing to it, the door. Oh my God. <laughs> mm-hmm. Ooh. it's so good dude i abigail is such a good character like i love i love what she represents i love how this actress plays her it's so fucking funny and then we do kind of a time jump because like i said yeah uh dimitri's got a full beard at this point yeah some time has passed he does find that woman by the way the the woman that started all this shit washed up on shore and it's funny because he has a crying fit about her like with her in his arms and then he just steals the necklace off her neck <laughs> that's why i'm pretty sure that's his wife and the other girl was his mistress i think you're right I think you're right. And it's funny, too, because both him and uh, Yarmo, who's the other rich guy, they keep trying to tell Abigail, look, we're, you know, when we get rescued, I'm rich. I will make your life so much better when we get rescued. If you, you know, share the fish with me, if you let me sleep in the lifeboat and neither of them get what they want from her. She doesn't take it at all. Yeah. Which rolls right into the ending, which we'll get there in just a minute. But the scene where they find the donkey and Yarmo has to kill it. Oh, my God. It's uh, it's awful, but it's. The way they do it is just so fucking funny. It's it's funny because you hear this donkey and you you see Yarmo walking into the bushes with a rock and you don't see the donkey at first and then it just kind of tilts its head to look up at him and then he just smashes the rock down on its head. Yes. And then Paula's like, uh, it's not dead <laughs> as they're celebrating and they're like, just, you got to do it again, kill it again. Like the scene is funny, mm-hmm. but then when they're like, you have to do it again, uh-huh. it just <laughs> it takes all the joy out. <laughs> yeah, it takes it a completely different place. Yeah. And also just how clear it is that it's just like a donkey head puppet. (laughs) (laughs) It's so cartoonish, but it's still like when he has to go back, it's just like, fuck. Yeah. And then, like, he's regaling about, like, oh, I killed this donkey. There's, like, this cave drawing that he does on this rock and everything. And then, man, the cut to Carl sitting on the ground next to Abigail rubbing her back. (laughs) Oh, my God. It takes me out every time. Carl, at this point, is just so fucking funny because he can't win for losing. Like, he can't make any fucking strides to getting back together with Yaya. Like, he's with Yaya this whole time. And then Abigail keeps, like, subtly hinting that, like, they're a couple. And and he's like, well, maybe we should go public, you know? Maybe we should hold hands. (laughs) His character is so nuanced. He's very nuanced, but he's also just a lost puppy the whole fucking movie. He goes where the affection is. Like, he's constantly fighting for equality with Yaya and then he realizes he's not going to get it and so he's like he'll play like the golden retriever boyfriend right and then when abigail comes to the picture and then he's like well i you know i'm still with yaya but you know maybe we should you know be more public about our relationship him and abigail like it's it's so pathetic his character's so pathetic but it's, it's funny because like it's the same relationship. It is. It's the same thing. It is. It's 100%. And then, like, when he's rubbing her back and then Yaya c- calls him an asshole. <laughs> Like I said, I think, I think he is the unsung MVP of this movie. I think Harris Dickinson plays this character perfect. It's it's absolutely perfect the way he plays him. Oh, yeah. he's Again, everyone this, in this movie is brilliant. Mm-hmm. But yeah, his, he's so good. And man, maybe the most infuriating scene of this movie, which it, it's played for comedy and it is exactly what needs to happen. But the stroke woman is just, she's been sitting in this raft, this life preserver raft, this whole time they've been on the island. And she's sitting there and, you know, again, she can only say a handful of words, but uh, she's sitting there and she hears this person singing. She's like, what is that? And then this guy walks up to her who is like a merchant. He's got 
a bunch of probably fake Louis Vuitton bags and Gucci watches and stuff, and he's trying to sell it to her. Just a bunch of knockoff shit. Yeah, like just like the people you see on the sidewalks in New York City just selling a bunch of bullshit. But she's freaking out. She's, she's crying. She has a tear. She's like, finally, someone's here. We're rescued. But she can't communicate to the guy. Yeah, she can't. Yeah, she does <laughs> not understand what she's saying. End in Vulcan. And she's just screaming, end in Vulcan. And uh, we cut over to Yaya. And she's like, hey, I'm going to go for a walk across the mountain. And uh, Abby goes, like, I'll go with you. You shouldn't go alone. And she tells Carl, she's like, I'll, I'll talk to you. Uh, this will be a good chance for us to, you know, I'll, I'll split you guys up so you don't have to. I'll break you guys up. Right. And they go on this walk. Uh, Mally, since this is your movie, I'm going to let you wrap up why this movie qualifies for this show. Because this ending is wild. <laughs> so they hike across the island. Mm-hmm. And like, just like the moment they leave, you're just like, this is not, this is not going to go well. No. They find a fucking luxury <laughs> resort. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, full-on, like, fancy, like, fucking place. Mm-hmm. And, like, they find, like, the entrance and, like, the elevator and all that shit. Mm-hmm. And Yaya's, like, celebrating, basically. Like, yep. oh my god, like, you know, we've done it, we're saved. Yep. And she's just like, let's take a minute and let's just, you know... Yeah, Abigail is like, let's, let's, let's savor the moment. Yeah. And while Yaya's just, like, sitting there, you just see, like, Abigail getting the biggest fucking rock she can find. Yep. <laughs> and it's just slowly walking towards Towards Yaya, like lifting it above her head. Mm-hmm. And just before she gets ready to like bring it down, like Yaya's been kind of rambling this whole time. Yeah. And she's like, you know, when we get back, maybe, you know, you could, you've helped us so much. I'll help you out. Maybe you could even be my assistant. Yep. And like Abigail kind of hesitates. Yeah. And before anything happens, we cut away. Yep. And it's just, uh, what's the name? Uh, Carl. Ha- yeah. Carl, Harry Dickinson, mm-hmm. just sprinting through the fucking jungle. Yep. Which, there's different interpretations of that. Yeah, there is. I think, like, you know, maybe he heard, what's her name? The stroke lady? Yeah, Teresa? I, I don't remember. Yeah, I think that's right, though. I think it's Teresa. Yeah. Maybe they heard her, and he met the vendor, yep. and was, like, running after them to tell them. But That's what I think it is, yeah. But yeah, we just, I mean, we leave, like, the movie cuts to credits with just him frantically sprinting through the fucking woods. Literally cut to credits. Like, <laughs> no, no resolution there. I did see online some people thinking that, yes, he met the merchant and the reason he's sprinting through the woods is not necessarily to go tell Yaya and Abigail, hey, we're rescued, but to go prevent Abigail from breaking him and Yaya up. Yeah. Yeah. Because while he's partying up with Abigail on the island because he needs her because she's in control, he realizes, oh, we can go back to our lives. And why would I want to be with this crew worker when I could be with this hot influencer woman, right? Yep. 100%. So he's going to go prevent Abigail from splitting the the two of them up. Yeah, that's not bad, actually. But it is interesting because Abigail does hesitate about killing Yaya. Yeah. But you can see she's because she's kind of like gritting her teeth and crying and trembling. Like you can tell, like, I think there's a couple different ways you can you can interpret this one is that she's realizing that she uh has gone too far and she's kind of feeling like sorrow for how she's treated everybody and the fact that she's even contemplated killing yaya but it could also be because yaya extended this job offer that it just plays right back into what she was already doing she was already like a working class person working for the rich like catering to the rich and that's what it would be working with yaya too yeah you know i I don't know. I I love how ambiguous this ending is. Yeah, because I mean, you could read it. It's like she's almost in shock because she's like, oh, my God, like this woman hasn't learned fucking anything. Or it could be, oh, my God, this woman is extending empathy to me. You know what I mean? Yeah, it could be either. I do think it's more than likely, oh, these people haven't learned anything, because if that was the case, she would have taken up Dimitri and Yarma on their offers, too, about like, you can have my watch when we get back. You know, I'll make sure your life is good. You'll never have to worry about anything. And I do love, too, that Yaya even tries to appeal to Abigail by saying, oh, you can finally see your kids again. And she goes, I don't have any kids. Mm -hmm. I love that, too, because like you would she just assumes that Abigail's got kids, right? Yeah. I mean, if this was me, I'd be sprinting into that elevator. (laughs) Like when Abigail's like, let's enjoy this moment. I'm like, lady, I need a fucking shower. Get the fuck out of my face. <laughs> we are I am sprinting to this elevator. And yeah, the last thing I wanted to mention before we get out to all the wrap-up stuff is obviously Ruben Austin couldn't have known this, but I do think there is something, there's like an extra layer here of sadness when you think about it that 
This movie ends with Abigail contemplating murdering Yaya to keep the reveal of the resort a secret. And, you know, knowing that Shelby would pass not long after filming this movie and her character potentially dying here, but it's questionable, it's subjective. I do think there's an extra layer, uh, a triangle of sadness here to, 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 to think about. Nice, you nailed it there. I wasn't trying to make a pun, but it just kind of came to me. But no, I, I do. I did think about that after watching this movie of like, oh, this character who is left in question about where she goes from here and to know that the real life person kind of was in the same situation. Like right before she passed, this movie was coming out and it, and it goes on to win all these awards and stuff and get all this recognition and to know that it was questionable then too of like what's going to happen next for this person. Yeah. I don't know. I, it kind of really bummed me out, honestly, more so than just the movie itself did. But yeah, I think she's terrific in this movie, as is the rest of the cast and crew. I, I love this movie. And I was hesitant to rewatch this movie just because I remember it being a very long movie, but not quite remembering how well the pacing was done. But uh, this it's two and a half hours and it kind of flies by yeah. just because of how funny it is and how tight it is and uh, because the characters are so engaging. So I I guess we, we can go ahead and do the recommendations now if you want to. Definitely. 100%. Yeah, without a fucking doubt. Are you kidding me? Yeah, I, I think it's one of the few satirical comedies that works on multiple levels and is even funnier on a rewatch. Like, this is a well-deserved Palme d'Or winner. Yeah, it deserves all, every bit of recognition and more that it got. And again, even if you haven't seen the movie and you're curious about it, go watch it. It is Please. even knowing where it goes... You will be enveloped by how good everybody's portrayal is. I apologize to my wife so many times for putting this movie off for so long. (laughs) Man, I went through this whole cast and I cannot find this interview guy at the beginning of the movie. Damn, dude. There's a character at the beginning named Lewis. I don't know who Lewis is. No fucking clue. Maybe that's him. I don't know. But uh, shout out to that guy. If you are that guy, if you know who that guy is, let us know because... For such a small role, he he steals that scene too. Yeah, and there is also someone on this cast list that is says uncredited as the puking lady. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's great. All right. Well, is there any uh, final words, final thoughts about Triangle of Sadness before we uh, wrap up the the episode here? Uh, I don't think so. All right. Well, let's jump over to Prop Cop. For new listeners of the show, Prop Cop is where Mally and I are going to look at all of the props, all of the physical, tangible items in the movie, The Triangle of Sadness, and uh, we are... Uh, Can I go first? Of course, absolutely. It's your movie. Fantastic. The burger and fries. Oh, nice. <laughs> absolutely. That was a hefty burger, man. That burger was huge. I wanted to get in there before you took it. <laughs> I had a couple of different options. I thought as a novelty, it'd be fun to have one of those cans of Avion aerosol spray water. But uh, I ultimately went with the self-playing piano. Oh. Just because, like, uh, it's a nice fucking piano, and it would be nice to just have that constantly playing some nice music for you. Sweet. I don't know if it survived the yacht blowing up, but uh, (laughs) I would like it pre-yacht sinking if possible. Yeah. What about bit part? There's uh, a couple different people you could be in this movie. And, uh, you know, bit part, for those who don't know, is where Mally and I are going to re cast somebody in this movie preferably a non-named character as ourselves yep. to build our filmography uh, you know what I'll, I'll go ahead and go first i wanted to be the chauffeur driver okay at the beginning of the movie that tells uh carl he needs to fight for yaya if he loves her and he wants to keep her nice what you got i want to be the man standing next to woody harrelson during the sales sequence oh darius the the first officer yeah that guy's really good got some really good stuff too because like when paula comes to him and he's like the guests want the crew to go for a swim i need you to tell them that they can't he goes why (laughs) (laughs) why (laughs) it's so good (laughs) my backup was gonna be the chef the chef's good one too man i i can't get over him that reaction of that the cooks have where he's like you're going on the water slide and i'm just like "Mm -hmm." yeah yeah, of course we are (laughs) all right well uh you know we've discussed the movie we discussed the ending that uh it's not a happily after after even if you assume they are going to get rescued there's some some dark shit going on here at the end of this movie so a little bit why don't you and i try and come up with a silver lining to triangle of sadness I will say uh, the woman who stood Yarmo up dodged a huge fucking bullet. <laughs> so there you go. That woman's got to be reading the papers being like, holy shit. All right, mine. <laughs> uh, no one had to deal with a crying fucking baby on the island. That's true. I had a feeling you're going something with the baby. So there you go. I had to. I mean, you know, I got I got a <laughs> reputation to keep. And uh, since Nathan's not here, I'll also say uh, Yarmo got a kiss from Yaya, so he didn't go home, you know, empty handed. Fair enough. Because <laughs> she does kiss him out of uh, retaliation for Carl rubbing Abigail's back <laughs> in that cave scene. So there you go. 
Well, about this, Molly? Um, you know, every time we cover a movie on the show, they always end in some way that is not, uh, you know, a nice little bow on the end of it. This movie not excluded. What is a movie people can watch after they watch Triangle of Sadness to balance things out? Preferably something that has some kind of tie in, some kind of connection, but you could also just go, you know, wild card, go off the books. So what's a movie you're going to double feature Triangle of Sadness with? I'm going with another one that involves pirates and getting stranded on an island. Okay. And I mean, it, you know, it has a bit of a downer, some downer moments because the rum is gone. Mm-hmm. Pirates of the Caribbean. There you go. So you say Caribbean, you're not a Caribbean guy? I don't know. Which one's correct? I don't know. <laughs> it's like caramel <laughs> and caramel. I don't fucking know. That would upset me because there's an extra A in there that people just pretend don't exist. Right? It's caramel. Thank you. <laughs> All right. I, I'm a Caribbean guy, but also I have no basis on that if it's right or not. So I jump back and forth. Okay. If I'm talking about like, oh yeah, a cruise around the Caribbean. Mm-hmm. But then for that movie, I like I have to say Caribbean. You know what? I think I might be in the same boat. I might do the same thing and not even realize it. Like it Pirates of the Caribbean? That sounds fucking stupid. Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah. It also sounds way, way less threatening for some reason. You know? Do you find that movie threatening? No, but when you say <laughs> Pirates of the Caribbean. Fair point. You know? Fair point. It sounds a little bit darker than Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah, it's like aluminum and aluminum. Yeah, there you go. I, I, I hear steel drones when I say Caribbean. I don't <laughs> hear it when I say Caribbean. <laughs> you just hear Johnny Depp's accent. <laughs> I'm going to go with another movie uh, revolving around uh, someone on a deserted island. I'm going to go with Castaway. Ooh, okay. Solid choice. Maybe, I don't know, maybe top three Robert Zemeckis movies. Wow. Maybe, I don't know. I'd have to think about it. Okay. Interesting. That movie uh, has some similar, you know, fun stuff going on in Ireland, but uh, I also think that movie has a much more upbeat ending than this one does. Fair point. All right. Well, I I think that's everything, right? For Triangle Sadness. Um, yeah, I think we nailed it, boys. All right. Boy, there's only <laughs> two of us here. If you haven't already, subscribe, rate, leave feedback, all that good stuff. Give us five stars wherever you can. Uh, you know what? No, that, uh, that, that, that seems braggy. Maybe go four. Yeah. You know what? If you could even do halves, I wouldn't even mind four and a half. Yeah. But five, we didn't deserve a five, right? I'll go as low as three and a half. Mm. I, this is like an auction now. We're bartering, but in reverse. Yeah, it just, it, you know, it's, it sounds pretentious to ask for five. There you go. Okay. Give us some stars. How about that? We'll leave it vague. Give us some stars. Clean, simple. Love it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And drop the the from Triangle Sad. Just make it Triangle Sad. <laughs> Sexier. If you haven't already, you can also find us on Reddit at reddit.com slash r slash Silverlines Playlist. And you can email us at the Silverlines Playlist at gmail.com. Now, next week is Nathan's pick, and he's not here, but that's okay because he has actually sent us in his clue for what we're going to be talking about next week. <laughs> Hey guys, sorry I've missed the entire episode. I was on a cruise, I got diarrhea, everybody's <laughs> mad, and it keeps getting worse. Mm-hmm. You texted me that you need a clue because that's apparently the most important thing uh, right now. <laughs> so uh, here we go. Um, with action scenes like this, a time of day won't be the only thing coming next week. <laughs> <laughs> Can I tell you? You know how we always tell Bally, like, oh, Bally's not here because of Blake <laughs> yeah. uh, related to the movie. We yeah. said, oh, the last time I saw Nathan, he was on a yacht that I think blew up. Oh, uh, yeah, that, you were right. That was me. <laughs> <laughs> gotta go oh wow bye and yeah that's triangle sadness looking forward to what we're talking about next week which i don't know if you'll be joining us Mally, but i'm assuming not nope <laughs> <laughs> keeping that trend going this season um all right well any departing words for our listeners before we get out of here uh ended vulcan <laughs> yep yep i'll say rest in peace oatmeal and uh i guess everyone on that yacht that blew up <laughs> and uh i'm hoping we line up here Matt, but we'll see as always and invoke it. Oh. Damn it. <laughs> God damn it. Excelsior. 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 Oh. Look it up. And in Vulcan. Jesus Christ, that was a long one. Uh, anyway, if you're still here, thanks for listening. And remember, you can always check out our back catalog for over 100 episodes of the show. Like, subscribe, and leave feedback if you want. And tune in next week for another one. Laters.